Hi, welcome to Built for Life today. I'm going to really enjoy this one. It's one of, when he talks about the role of the wife, this is one of my favourites. And I'm going to really enjoy this session. But uh, we're looking at session 3D today. And uh, 3D is about unsaved husbands. I get asked this an awful lot over the years by wives who have unsaved husbands. But let's pray together first. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the wives listening today who have unsaved husbands. Father, I know it can be distressing for them. I know they really want to see the husband saved. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will help them to have faith in what you've declared is the way to see this happen. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've got the notes, are great. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. Always remember, no more than five bullet points and try and answer the discussion questions at the end. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And also, if you've been blessed in any way, don't forget to leave a comment. That would be really encouraging. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, we're looking to today at this session three, which is all about the role of the wife. If you've missed the other two sessions, which was session one, what is marriage, and also session two, the role of the husband, I encourage you to listen to those because this subject is a big subject, really, but it's all about togetherness. It's all about the checks and the balances uh, together, you see. And so we've already dealt with the, the husband, for instance, and now we're looking at the word of God about the wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we're looking at this great subject, unsaved husbands. So let's read together the session purpose. In this session, you will realize that living out Christ in your marriage means your unsaved husbands will see Christ reflected through you. I'm going to read that one more time. In this session, you will realize that living out Christ in your marriage means your unsaved husband will see Christ reflected through you. And I get it, over the years I've had a lot of, lot of questions of, from, un, you know, from wives who have unsaved husbands. You know, I really want my husband to get saved. And, and people use various techniques from really fasting and praying to almost nagging the gospel into them from trying to drag them to church. and Men can be really stubborn, can't they? And, and don't forget, if you quarrel, quarrel, don't quarrel the gospel either. <laughs> I'll say that again. Don't quarrel or nag the gospel to your husband because if you listen to the previous lesson, that will really help you about quarrelsomeness and nagging your husband or just switch off, whether he's saved or unsaved. But in this case, if he's unsaved and you're nagging the gospel or quarrelling the gospel or saying, why won't you come to church? And you're getting all uptight with it, you see. Uh, he will switch off. So you're actually making things very much worse in that case. And, and we don't want your husbands to switch off from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, do we? And so the word of God says, you know, that we are to be wise, you see in the way we, we we converse with your husbands. And you are to be wise because if you have an un, unsaved husband, he needs to hear the gospel to be saved. But to get him to that place where he's open to the gospel, if especially if he is more of a closed book on the issue, then there's, some, there's keys that the, the word of God give us to help that along. And so we're going to learn that today. And as we as I teach this, I really want you to believe it. I really want you to believe it and put it into action in your daily life. Because when you put it into action in your daily life and you believe it and you're reflecting Christ, guess what your husband will see? Christ. Guess who the the, 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 hus the unsaved husband will hear? The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's who you want him to hear. That's who you want him to see. So he'll be saved. Amen. And I really believe that the word of God has given you answers for your unsaved husband. I really do. And so we're going to look at that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And so we're looking at 1 Peter 3, 
verses 1 and 2. And this is an instruction from the Apostle Peter himself. Hallelujah. The Apostle Peter inspired by God the Holy Spirit to write this down because the Holy Spirit knows that this question is going to be asked. He knew these conversations was going on in the churches and he inspired Peter to write this. And so it's God's answer to the unsaved husband's issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it says this, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands. So that, say that out loud with me and underline it. So that. So what Peter's saying here, look, if you've got an unsaved husband, he says, submit yourselves to your own husband. He's unsaved. Yeah, he's unsaved. And we've already dealt with, I think it was lesson two, maybe, submission. Uh, and so go back if you have to listen to that, because that lesson on submission is whether your husband's saved or not. And so Peter, again, is outlining this key. He's saying, look, wives, submit to your own husbands. And notice it's always your own husband, not the pastor. Your pastor is not your husband. Your husband is your husband. And he's saying, look, submit to your own husband. Yeah? So that. So what Peter immediately declared him by the Holy Spirit is that there is going to be an outcome for, from submission. And I don't really want to go into all the subject of submission because I've dealt with that in a pre previous uh, lesson and session. And so go back to learn all about that. But the key is if you implement that, there will be a result. And here it is. So that if any of them do not believe the word, that means they haven't believed the gospel. They're not converted. They're not born again husbands. They are unsaved husbands. They haven't believed the word of the gospel. They may be won over without words. Oh my word. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? That your unsaved husband who doesn't believe the message of the gospel can come to faith without nagging, without quarrels, without you on at him all the time to come to church, without any kind of sneaky tactics you use as wives, and wives can use sneaky tactics at times to try and get him to believe. It says without words, without the nagging, without the constant gospel message in his ear rolls, without the constant come to church message. There's nothing wrong in inviting your husband to church, but I'm saying you have to kind of judge the situation or how open your husband is or not. But if he's close to the gospel and you say, I've been at him for years to come and he still hasn't come. Or I've been at him for years to become a Christian and he still hasn't become a Christian. And you're getting frustrated. And the trouble is, wise, when you get frustrated, you, t you tend to try harder. Well, this message today, this session of today is not about you trying harder and, and keep talking more and keep trying to get him to come to church more. This is about relax. What do you mean relax? Relax. Relax, relax, relax. Peter's trying to get these wives here who've got unsaved husbands to relax and rather believe. I'll say that. Relax and rather believe. That's the key. Believe that what God's word is saying right here is enough. And I'm challenging you wise right now and encouraging you if you've got an unsaved husband. Do you believe the instruction that the Apostle Peter is giving by God the Holy Spirit himself? Do you believe it's enough just to obey what he's saying? And the first step is obedience to your husband in submission, whether he's saved or not. To stop that quarrel, to stop that nagging, to stop that dragging, to stop all that and saying, look, there's a way to win my husband to Christ without words. How is that possible? Without words. In other words, he will open up to the gospel message without the you keep on it. If, one, you submit. Secondly, it says without what words, by what? 
the behaviour of their wives. Oh, my word. And, and so the behaviour aspect of your life, wives, is the witness. Is the witness. Your behaviour, your character that we've been dealing with in this session three altogether. And that's why session three, wives, is so important to be obeyed in all that we're teaching in this session three. Because if you've got an uns unsaved husband, it's that character. It's that character that you live out Christ will win your husband will change your husband's view of the gospel it really will it says without words by the behavior of the wives not the nagging of the wives not the constant invitations not the constant fasting and praying for your husband it doesn't say these things that we do and we do these things like constant, you can do these things like nagging or dragging or inviting or even fasting and praying or spiritual warfare. You can do all that because it's easier than changing behavior at times. See, your husband, your unsaved husband is looking at your life. He knows you remember. Your husband and wife, he's known you for years. And so if you got saved, he can see what Jesus has or has not done in your life. If you are the same in character and he knows your strengths and he knows your weaknesses, he knows your fears and you're not allowing Christ in that behavior, you're not allowing Christ to change your life wives, then he will just say, well, nothing's changed because he knows you more than anybody. You say, well, she goes to church and she sings songs and I don't mind her going to church. But she comes back home and behaves exactly as I've always known her. She has the same fears. She has the same anxiousness. She has the same this, that and the other, you see, the worries. She has the same character or morals or whatever. Or she's still just as quarrelsome or treats me wrong or whatever. Whatever it may be, whether it's nice or not nice, he knows, your unsaved husband knows your behaviour. He knows your character. And if that hasn't changed, you see, since you got saved, it might change in front of a congregation at church, but has it changed at home? And if it hasn't changed at home, that is a problem because... The, that's what he will see. That's the gospel he will see. That's the Jesus he will see. He won't see the church one. But if he sees Jesus through you, if he sees the behavior change, if he say, sees your fears and your worries and your anxieties that he used to be, have to lift you up from or help you through or all the time, but now you've got a strength and a dignity and a, a moral compass and a, a great behavior in Christ, and he will see Jesus and want to come with you to church. Or he'll want to hear what you've got to say about the gospel because he will see how you have changed because of Jesus. That's the Jesus he will want to know. He will also want to see the Jesus that makes you love your husband even more. You see, if you're loving your husband as Christ wants you to do, if you're treating your husband as Christ wants you to treat him, he will be overwhelmed by love. He will be overwhelmed by passion. He will be overwhelmed by your character, overwhelmed in a positive way where he just says, well, if Jesus has helped my wife that way, if Jesus has changed my wife that way, if Jesus has made my wife love me the way she does even more than when we first got married, then that's a Jesus I respect. That's a Jesus I want to get to know. And so it will open his heart and mind to the gospel. Praise the Lord. So it says this, without words, by the behavior of their wives. Praise the Lord. Amen. That when they see, here we go, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Hallelujah. And we'll, well, let's just take a, a little few moments now to go into the word in focus. So what does the word, how is a husband, what does the word one mean? How will you win your husband over without words the, the word one or win simply means gain a person to christ 
So this is about salvation. This is the instruction, you wise with unsaved husbands. If you want to win him, win him to Christ, it says behavior. By your behavior. And this word means manner of life, conduct in the way you are with holy living. How holy living shows itself. Holy living shows itself. And that's not the holiness of law and all the stupidness or tradition. This is about your life dedicated to the Lord in a way that also means you'll be dedicated to your husband. You see, dedication to the Lord is not dedicated always to a church service. And so you're out every night of the week and you're saying, well, I'm dedicated to the Lord and so my husband will just have to get on with it. No, no, that ain't going to win him. That's not going to win him. Because being dedicated to the Lord means you will obey and live out Christ in all the areas such as your married life. And you will respect your husband more, love your husband more, show kindness to your husband more, etc, etc, etc. Submit to your husband more. And when you're doing that in your holy life, dedicated to the way the Lord wants you to be a wife in your home with your husband, he will see Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Purity. What does purity mean? It means pure from every fault. Immaculate. It means holy and saint in its root word. That means, again, you know, we, 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 we got to understand that when we talk about holiness, it's not just by the actions we do in that sense. Holiness is a, we have set, been separated by God. We are separated and sanctified by God for his use. And so God wants to use you in your home life. God wants to use you in your married life. You're dedicated and separated and made holy for use. I've, I've taught this in just Jesus' sanctification. In the Old Testament, when they used to have all the utensils in the temple, they were sanctified. They were made holy through blood and oil, representing the blood of Christ and the, the oil of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself. And so that is now in you. And so you have been sanctified, set apart for his use, dedicated for his use. And so God wants to use you, therefore, in your married life. He wants to use you to reach your husband, breached by your behavior, not your nagging. Hallelujah. By reflecting the character of Christ. That's how he's going to be won. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so don't just think, well, I want to go to church every week, leave my husband at home, uh, fending for himself all the time. And, you know, when I'm at church, I'm going to do spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. And then when I get home, I'm going to preach to him the gospel and nag him to death to come to church. And that's me being dedicated and holy to the Lord. Absolutely not. Show good behavior towards your husband. That's living holy unto the lord amen praise the lord and reverence it means respect for authority rank and dignity in in all words and this is a happens some uh, some saved wives sometimes and this might be you right now can take an upper hand as it were they think well my husband's unsaved therefore because i'm saved i know more than him i'm not going to listen to him uh, i'm not going to listen to my pastor or i'm going to listen to you know other people or i'm going to listen more to them and kind of and and basically they tend to put down the husband sometimes maybe they don't mean it but i've listened to many unsaved wives who have unsaved husbands and it's like well i'm taking the lead now and so in the home, because they are saved, they begin to take the lead. As though they are the head because they're saved and they know what they're doing and they're listening to the Lord in prayer. They take the lead rather than the husband. Well, if you're doing that, wives, I want you to repent because that's against the word of God. This is a You are to reverence your husband and submit to your own husband whether he's saved or not and so peter is exactly saying this he's saying like if your behavior isn't respectful to the authority of your husband even though he's unsaved instead of winning him to christ you will repel him from christ 
I'm going to say this because it's so important. I'm going to say it again. In your married life, if you're taking the lead and not respecting your husband's authority in your married life, even though he's unsaved, instead of winning him to Christ, you will repel him from Christ. So there might be, you might need some repenting there. You might need to change your mind and change your behaviour from being the wife who says, because I'm saved, I'm not listening to my husband, I'm taking the lead in this house. You're wrong. That's not God's order, even with your unsaved husband. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the next verse of scripture is really a comfort scripture, but also, again, you must believe it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 7, 14. 1 Corinthians 7, 14. And it says this, For the unbelieving husband is what? Sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean. But, but now are they are holy. And so, again, now this is the Apostle Paul speaking now. The Apostle Paul is speaking because, again, whether it's in Peter's congregations, whether it's in Paul's congregations, we see lots of questions being asked by husbands and wives who have unsaved spouses about the children. And it's so easy when you're unsaved, you have an unsaved husband or wife, to do your own thing because you're saved. And that's wrong. You're together on this. You're together on this because you are married. You are in union together because you are married. Unsaved or not, you are in union. And so you must remember that. It's so important. And it says, For the unsaved, unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Hallelujah. So, you, you know, your husband has been sanctified, separated, and dedicated for God's use, whether he's saved or not, in your home. And so the Lord will speak through your husband, even though he's unsaved, because he's sanctified. He's been dedicated. He's been separated for God's use as a husband in your family, in your house, in your married life, God will speak through your husband. Wives, he will, because he's been made holy by your faith in Christ. Christ then has made him holy. Christ has made him dedicated and separated for God's use in your married life. So God will use him. Don't just think, well, because he's unsaved, God ain't going to use my husband to speak to me. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. And not only that, he's been separated and dedicated to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To have the influence of faith. To have the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's in you, wives, to minister to your husband. And sometimes that can be tricky because you might not see it. But the Bible says it's really happening. The Holy Spirit is ministering to your husband. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your husband. You get on with your character. You get on with your behaviour like the Apostle Peter says. And now Paul's saying, look, he will speak through your husband. Amen. So keep the right order, but also understand that the Holy Spirit, because he has sanctified and dedicated and separated him for the Lord's use, he will come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So never be fearful of that. Never be nervous of that. Never be anxious about that. Because on the outward, you probably think nothing's changing. But on the inward, everything can be changing. Praise the Lord. And let that encourage your faith today. Praise God. So now let's have a look at the life in focus, which kind of sums up a lot of what I've already said so far. Recognize that submission to your unsaved husband is something you should do. It's the first step. Listen to me carefully. It's the first step to winning your husband to Christ. Notice it's not loads of gospel preaching or even nagging that wins an unsaved husband to Christ. 
It's not. The unsaved husband is won to Christ by the conduct, wise, wise listen to me carefully, by the con- conduct of your life. How you reflect Christ. When you reflect Christ in your behaviour and character, your unsaved husband will be drawn to Christ in you. Nagging your husband to come to church is not meeting Jesus. Is the Christ you have reflecting through your life? Are you reflecting the kind of Jesus your unsaved husband should get to know? That's a challenge, isn't it? Show your husband godly respect and he will begin to respect Christ who you follow. Don't talk down to your husband just because he's unsaved. God will speak through him as the head. And finally, in life and focus today, as you are waiting for your husband to come to Christ, keep praying, get support from your church family. So after you've done all that, yes, keep praying. Yes, get support from your church family. But make sure you're pouring action to your faith by doing what I've taught you in this session. Amen. There is action to the faith. There is action to the prayers that you've prayed. Praise the Lord. Light bulb moment today. Stop nagging and start living Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah. I know it's challenging, but that's what the word of God is teaching us. Stop nagging and start living Christ. Christ. This is a lot of practical stuff, but this is just the supernatural, folks. It will bring supernatural results. So, what are you to discuss? Number one, how do you need to adjust your behavior in your marriage to win your husband to Christ? You might need to write them down. Amen. And this week, get somebody to pray with you about your husband's salvation and believe God. So what I want you to do this week, yes, list the characteristics you need to change, begin to change them and implement them into your marriage. And as you do that, maybe get with somebody who can pray with you and kind of draw a line in the sand and saying, well, I'm putting actions to my faith. Now I'm going to pray and I will see results. Praise the Lord. And just keep on doing what the Bible tells you to do. I hope that's been a help to you, encouragement to you, and a challenge to you. But we will then see a lot of unsaved husbands come to Christ. And, you know, I don't want to end by saying just unsaved husbands. Because, again, if you're a husband and you say, well, I've got an unsaved wife. Remember, 1 Corinthians seven fourteen also applies to you. That the wife is sanctified by your faith. And so she is set apart you know to hear the gospel message she's set apart for the to be a good wife to you by the holy spirit and god will also be influencing her and so maybe you want to also do the same routine maybe change if you've listened to session two about how to how to be the husband and how to have the role of the husband right implement those things by faith because the same thing applies they will see the unsaved wife will also see the change in your character husbands you will see the change in your behavior and they'll say that's the jesus i want to get to know and so until next time i'm built for life god bless you